Hey Z Stars, what's good in the head? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. Now I'm super excited to share with all of you the products that have helped me grow my hair and retain my length. Now let's get right into the video, but of course, before we do, please do the four simple things I always remind you to do. Please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. Please be sure to comment down below. Let me know what kinds of products you use in your hair. Let me know your hair type, your porosity, etc., etc., etc. Please be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones and last but never ever least please be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time i post a new video and please don't skip the ads so your girl can make this money ads are actually what helped me get revenue on youtube aside from sponsorships so if you guys want me to keep making content and help me make this sustainable then please watch the ads and show me that you love me Hey y'all, if you're not following me on Instagram via at Efixara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A, then you're totally missing out. I have a lot of beautiful images and photography to share with you all. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at Zara if you want to chat with me, share with me, enter giveaways, etc, etc. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing all of my products, all my holy grail products and brief reviews as quickly as is reasonable. Now I'm not going to detail my regimen here because that's for my wash day video. And of course, if you want to know exactly how to build a regimen, I have a video which I'm going to link in the top right corner. So you all please open that up so you can view it right after you're viewing this video. At the end of the day, no product can be truly effective without a solid regimen behind it. I've categorized everything by function as well as grouped certain products together within certain families based upon active ingredient and micro function. It's a very detailed video, so get yourself some popcorn or a snack or some almond milk and let's get right into this. My favorite pre-poo product and the only pre-poo product I've ever loved is Diva Curls Wash Day Wonder. Like what? I've never ever had a product detangle my hair like that in my entire life. And this product rivals another one of my favorite products as far as the scent. Like that entire line of products smells incredible. Like it's, it's insane. Pre-poo heaven. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. That's how amazing that product is. Now, personally, I use both soaps and shampoos to get the job done where my hair is concerned, and I talked about the difference between soaps and shampoos in my regimen video briefly. Now, typically, my choice of soap and shampoo depends upon my environment as well as what is in my hair. Soap has the potential to form a precipitate known as soap scum, so I don't use it if I'm working with hard water. When calcium and magnesium in hard water, however, react with a detergent, the resulting compound is still able to dissolve in water, so there's no residue left over. Choosing which one you use is entirely up to you, and of course there are certain instances where one will trump the other. Ultimately, it's about listening to your hair and doing what physically feels right. If I'm using hair grease, I like my shampoos to strip, so I'm going to use something with sulfates. If I'm using a butter or an oil, I may not even use a shampoo. I might just use a conditioner to refresh and gently remove some of the oil and the butter or I'll dilute my sulfate shampoo, or I'll use a non-sulfate moisturizing shampoo. I'm not necessarily picky with the types of detergent, I'm more picky with how the ingredients affect my hair and especially my scalp. Hair is like fabric. It's not alive, but it needs to be taken care of properly so that it does not show signs of wear and tear. The scalp is indeed alive, and the skin on the scalp is typically more sensitive than the skin on other parts of the body. It needs to be attended to with care and true deliberation. Now let's get right into my faves. Black Soap Shampoo is actually my number one favorite and my go-to shampoo. It lathers a lot, which I love, and it cleanses quickly, meaning I have to use it less times. Now you do not necessarily need a lather to cleanse hair or skin, however, foam does actually help suspend dirt and debris, so it can aid the cleansing process to a degree, depending on the type of foam that is produced. Foam can also be indicative of the concentration of whatever surfactant is in your detergent because surfactants are foaming agents to varying degrees. Now there are times when foam is purely cosmetic, so it basically just gives the illusion that you're doing more with cleansing when you're actually not. Now my black soap that foams or lathers is actually by this one Nigerian brand. 
I'm giving them a very hard side eye because their customer service is pretty questionable. I've had terrible experiences on like every occasion, so I'm not going to tag them. I'll instead link some DIYs and also link you to some great alternatives on Amazon. Dr. Bronner's Tea Tree, Peppermint, and Baby Mild. I speak about these together because the base is the same, and that is Castile Soap. Now I love this soap because it is very pure and very natural. It actually works very well to deep clean my very sensitive scalp. If you have hard water though, as discussed previously, you need to be very careful because it has the potential to form soap scum. Nizaral! Now I can't in good conscience recommend Sulfur 8 because of the presence of triclosan, which has actually even been banned by the FDA. Now I encourage you all to use Google, please. Now, I personally feel that I need to do more research to determine whether or not the claims surrounding triclosan are actually substantiated, but because the FDA has taken the time to ban it, I'm more inclined to believe that they are. At least that to me would imply that there are actually conclusive studies regarding triclosan, but I'm gonna look into it. And again, I encourage you all to do your own research. Now, a great alternative with a very potent antifungal is Nizarel. The active ingredient is ketoconazole. Now my scalp actually responds very well to azole or azole antifungals, and if I feel that I need a little bit of help, I turn to Nizarel. It's preventative for me, so I don't use it very often, and when I do, I make sure to dilute it at a one-to-one -one ratio. I focus on my scalp, and I use it after my first shampoo. That way it's actually penetrating my scalp. <laughs> Once every two to four weeks, and at times once a week if I need that little bit of extra help is very good for me. While I'm using Nisrel, I leave it on my scalp for five to ten minutes as I wash the other parts of my body or whatever. <laughs> that way the active ingredient actually has time to do its job. There are also anecdotal reports of increased growth when antifungals in the azole family are applied to the scalp. So this might be something that you observe if you incorporate Nisarel in your regimen. <laughs> Now, Aussie Moist is the shampoo that I use on a weekly basis, and I'm sure some of y'all are like, girl, you be using sulfate shampoos on a weekly basis? Yes, yes I do. It gets my hair and my scalp very, very clean. It strips my hair and is arguably one of my most clarifying shampoos, but somehow still gentle enough for me to use on a weekly basis. I love it because it removes grease and other thick butters and oils without prejudice. It's also a synthetic detergent, so I don't have to worry about precipitates and hard water. Now, while it feels fantastic on my scalp and gets my scalp very clean, I still make sure I incorporate my antifungals. Now, I did mention using a first shampoo, then my antifungal, and this is typically the shampoo I use prior to that. Next on the list is my organic South Theranine shampoo, my 100% pure burdock and neem and my Neem Tea Tree Bar by Opia Naturals. These are different brands, but I'm lumping them together because of the presence of the neem, which is ultimately like the primary active ingredient. Tea Tree is another potent ingredient that is present in all three of these. Burdock and Nettle, two powerful scalp healers and hair loss combatants, combine in 100% pure to further the healing properties. They are also sulfate free. Neem has been a staple in Ayurvedic medicine for centuries. Anecdotal evidence supports Neem's efficacy as a scalp healer and dandruff deterrent. To be fair, there's not a lot of actual peer-reviewed research that supports these claims, so essentially the jury is still out. In my own journey, however, Neem has actually been very effective at soothing my sore and very sensitive scalp. It's essentially a great alternative to other fungicidal shampoos, a natural alternative. Now, if you all would like dedicated videos on Neem, Nettle, Burdock, and other oils, plants, herbs used in Ayurveda, then please drop some orange emojis down below, let your girl know. These are the conditioners that have been super beneficial to me and my very sensitive scalp. Now, if you've been following me for a while, if you're an OG, then you know that my scalp does not tolerate a lot. Now, generally, I actually avoid the letting conditioner touch my scalp, but these ones, when they do slip onto my scalp by chance, do not do any harm and actually have worked wonders when it comes to keeping my hair really soft, smooth, and deeply moisturized. Aussie Moist. This is my favorite conditioner by far. It makes my hair silky smooth. 
Curly girl cult followers will burn this product at the stake, but your girl is a kinky, coily girl, not a curly girl, so I don't care. One of the active ingredients, bis aminopropyl dimethicone, is actually what causes the hair to be really silky and really smooth. It is a silicone that is water insoluble, which ultimately means it does not dissolve in water, so it does have to be shampooed out. The smell is really cute, and because it's such a popular conditioner for people who are non-black, I'm more inclined to believe that the way it's formulated is safer for the general public. Yes to carrots and yes to cucumbers, baby. See, I'm just gonna let you people know right now, there is no single conditioner I've ever used in my life that smells better than these products. Now they don't provide as much slip as my Aussie Moist, but they do make my hair feel very rich and well fed. Like my hair actually feels incredible and so deeply nourished when I use these products. At times I use these products exclusively for a few weeks just to give my hair that extra bit of pampering. Personally, though my conditioners never ever stop working as effectively as they did on day one, <laughs> I like to switch things up from time to time just to allow my hair to have a smorgasbord of ingredients. I've used skincare the same way and my philosophy of rotating products consistently, products that have been proven to work, is more in line with the fact that we need an array of foods to actually satisfy our bodies and provide our bodies with the appropriate nutrients. Why not do the same with hair and skin? Organic scalp fairy neem conditioner and 100% pure burdock and neem scalp conditioner. These are essentially companion products for the shampoos I mentioned previously that bear the same name. When my scalp was going through its worst episode ever when I was in school in New York, these products actually saved my life. Like my scalp was sore, it was inflamed, it was just a mess. And I was scared that the next step was my hair fall, but it did not fall out, thank God, because I had products like these on deck to actually solve whatever issue was going on. Now I didn't know about fungicidal shampoo then, but in retrospect, it seems like I had some sort of like fungal outbreak on my scalp. Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle. Now I just love this conditioner because it's always been super accessible for me and like it gives me memories of just going to Trader Joe's in school or back home in Annapolis and just like chopping life up. Now obviously here I can't access it easily or readily, but back home I would literally just pop on over to your Trader Joe's and pick me up some tea tree tingle and have myself a nice dandy wash day. The primary active ingredient is the tea tree essential oil, which of course is really great for troubled scalps because it's an antimicrobial, antifungal, antiseptic. It's like anti-struggle. So <laughs> I loved the fact that they included that ingredient in there. The tingle was really soothing for my very troubled and very dry scalp, and the nettle was also helpful when it came to combating my dry scalp. Love natural step three. Now, if you went natural when I did, which was about like 10 plus years ago, then you know the YouTuber Kimmy Tube fam. She's one of the YouTube OGs and one of the people that actually helped me to flourish during my natural hair journey. Her Love Natural Step 3 is actually one of my all-time favorite deep conditioners. I low-key get emotional talking about it. This is like weird. Oh my god. All the products from her line work impeccably with my hair. I haven't had access to it in a long time and I think that maybe she ships to Nigeria so I might just like ship it here or I'll ship it to my dad so when I go back home I can use it. But um, when my hair was extremely damaged from heat and I was trying to recover, this really helped to restore my hair. It also kept my hair moisturized during the harsh New York winters. It has a little bit of protein but it's not too much for my low porosity hair and offers up a healthy dose between my true protein treatments. Aussie Moist, three minute miracle. Now this is truly a three minute miracle. It does wonders for my hair in a very short amount of time. Now part of me exercising responsibility is actually using my steamer regardless of the conditioner that's being used. And though this conditioner is fast acting and deep penetrating, I prefer to use my steamer since I'm a low porosity natural. Now I find that it works great both ways, but I just feel that extra bit of security when I do use my steamer with the conditioner. Mixed chicks. Another one of my all-time favorites and an OG in my hair care routine. Now a hairstylist actually had the audacity to tell me that the product is intended only for people who are mixed. Needless to say, I completely wrote her off. <laughs> it's a fantastic companion conditioner and the ingredients are really beneficial for hair. 
Now when I use it, it makes my hair feel strong and healthy. Shea Moisture Low Po Deep Condition. Now if you know me, you know I hate Shea Moisture products with a burning passion. However, I love this product and I love this line so flipping much. Like I don't understand what they put in there, my goodness. Now I've never experienced a line that caters to my low porosity hair the way this line does and continues to do. Now I hate fragrance in my skincare because my skin is really sensitive as well. However, I don't mind it in my hair care if it smells this good. My goodness, the scent is divine. Like y'all, it's definitely up there with my yes to care and cucumbers. Now the products in this line, I won't lie to you, they're incredible and I can't say enough good things about this line. The entire line has kept my hair so deeply moisturized and it's only three products. It's literally only three products. It's unfortunate because it's literally being discontinued though this is like the one thing that Shea Moisture has managed to do right. I literally DM'd them. I'm not gonna show private DMs because I feel like that's not appropriate, but long story short, they did inform me that it was discontinued. Now I think we should appeal to them by sending them Instagram DMs, commenting on their page, sending them tweets, sending them emails, and etc. so we can actually keep this line around. Let's make our voices heard for once. Like, I'm tired. I'm tired of suffering and this product, this line has changed my life. Shea Moisture Low Po Leave-In. Now this is tied for first place as the best leave-in I've ever used in my life. Nothing has ever moisturized my hair so deeply and for such a long period of time. It softens my hair, makes it feel silky, moisturized, and so nourished. As much as I love my other leave-in conditioners, it's almost as if this enters my hair shaft and then somehow seals it so that the moisture does not escape. But it's a different kind of sealing because the other leave-ins I use are pH balance. As a low po natural, you need that issue in your life. But this is different. It locks the moisture in. It literally cannot go anywhere. Now my hair is so low porosity and prone to dryness that it has a naturally kind of rough texture. Now this product has imparted a softness to my hair that I've never before experienced. 110% recommend y'all. I give this like 10 out of five stars. <laughs> like That's how much I love this product. And again, they're discontinuing it. So buy as much as you can and make your voice heard by letting them know that people actually use this product and enjoy it. Love natural step four. This is my other first place leave-in. I might love it more than Shea Moisture. I don't know, I think they're tied. I love this product so much. It is so dear to me. Again, this line completely restored my hair and the fact that all the products are pH balanced makes this line perfect for every hair type. I've loved this product for a long time and the entire line, as far as I'm concerned, is on par or even superior to the Shea Moisture Low Porosity line. Ovia Naturals Curl Moisture Cream. Another first place leave-in. I tried this on a whim years ago when I had run out of every single product I ever used, expecting it to not work. I actually got the surprise of my life because it worked and got me over a very significant growth plateau in my hair journey. pH balance and deep moisturizing, this leave-in is actually one of the first to allow me to experience moisture for a long period of time. Kinky Curly, not today. Now this is not a low pH leave-in, so you have to actually use something over top to seal it in properly. Now, I tend to pair this with the gel since it's not a low pH. It's super softening, but again, if you use it alone, you need to use something on top of it that will close the cuticle of your hair. Cantu Shea Butter Leave-In, Cantu Shea Butter Leave-In for natural hair, and Cantu Shea Butter Coil Calm Detangler. Cantu gets a bad rap, but Shea Girl is still a fan, I won't even lie to you. It is very inexpensive and it's very effective. Their products are pH balanced and they keep your hair moisturized if you have a solid hair regimen and you practice healthy hair habits. The most moisturizing product in this particular lineup is the Detangler, which I actually use as one of my leave-ins. All of them work very well, but I like to apply my leave-ins to hair that is pretty much soaking wet. Now there was a controversy years ago about alcohol being inside the product rubbing alcohol, but ultimately its presence there was and still is very insignificant and essentially is there to aid the emulsification process. The amount present allegedly does not harm the hair and if I'm remembering correctly, when I asked one of their reps about it, she said that it dissolves out, but they have to indicate that it was used to emulsify the formula. Correct. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know. Any of you cosmetic scientists or chemists, period, let your girl know. Now, this is important to note, Cantu does not work for everyone, but it has worked for me. And if it has not worked for you, you may consider using it in a different way than you have been using it. Now, again, I use it on sopping wet hair and then I seal it in immediately with typically an oil because it's so heavy. I don't tend to use grease with Cantu, but I might start. Protein is really important, but if you're low porosity, your hair probably heats it. Now, Aubrey Organics GPB Glycoprotein Balance is the only protein that I use in my hair. I'm not coming to kill myself, so. It's mild and still moisturizing and a great option for low porosity naturals such as myself. I learned about it from Curly Nikki about a decade ago, literally a decade ago. I can't believe I'm old enough to say a decade ago. And I've been using it since. Now guys, um, a quick aside, I'm really not that old, so I don't know why I'm being so extra, but whatever. It is an incredible product for hair fortification that allows low porosity naturals to receive an essential hair care ingredient without experiencing protein shock or sensitivity. Almond and carrot oil. These are the only two oils I use on my hair that are undiluted and in their original form. As a low porosity natural, my hair is ultra finicky and does not tolerate a lot of oils. Almond oil is popularly known as a nutrient rich emollient oil that nourishes the hair and gently strengthens. Now I can definitely attest to the gentle strengthening because it makes my hair feel soft, but somehow firm. Carrot oil on the other hand is rich in vitamins A, E, and beta carotene. Now again, I use a carrot oil from this one Nigerian brand, the same Nigerian brand with the trash customer service. I don't want to give them a shout out, so I'm going to link some alternatives down below. It is important to note, however, that carrot oil is the only other oil I love as much as, if not more than almond oil. Now my other sealant, my heavier sealant. Number one is my shea butter mix, and um, that's something I make myself. It's been a staple in my hair regimen since I went natural over a decade ago, and it's something that works so effectively that my friends and my family loved it, and they requested it. I still use it and love it, and it's been a huge part of my hair and my scalp health. Now my other sealants include grease, really, that's, that's just it. I mean, that shea butter mix is the only heavy sealant I use that is not grease, and I can use it on my scalp and on my hair. It works great for both. The only grease that I use on my scalp, however, is sulfur eight. And as somebody who has a very sensitive, finicky scalp, not only does it keep my scalp moisturized by sealing in the moisture, it also <laughs> keeps the itchies at bay because of the presence of the sulfur especially. I love sulfur eight grease. It's amazing and it's literally made my hair so healthy and so happy. What a relief it is to not want to scratch your scalp after struggling with itchy scalp for years. Next on that list is the Blue Magic Conditioning Hairdress in the original and the Conditioning Hairdress in Indian Hemp. I use both of them interchangeably. The original is my personal favorite because the formula is a bit more basic than the Indian Hemp, but I do like the Indian Hemp because there's no coloring added as far as I know. Let's check the ingredients right here and see. And it also has some butters and oils that, you know, are buzz butters and buzz oils for people in the natural hair community. So I feel like it's the best of both worlds. And I love petrolatum, like there's nothing wrong with it. I have an entire video dedicated to one, busting the myths surrounding petrolatum. And then I also have another video that is the truth about petrolatum. I'm going to link both of those in my grease playlist right over here so y'all can check that out and let me know what you think. So now there's also the Dugro Mega Long, the Dugro Mega Thick, and the Dugro Extra Light. The Mega Long and the Mega Thick are two of the ones I used primarily when I was a child. My mom used those in my hair all the time and let me tell you sis, let me tell you bro, let me tell you genderless sibling. Your girl had inches on inches on inches. My hair was flourishing. Even my white friends will be like, Girl, your hair's long, girl. And I'll be like, Yeah, thank you. Thank you, I know. Guys, I know I have a little bit more energy today. I'm a little more extra today. <laughs> Somehow in the midst of my normal chill vibe. And I don't know why, because I'm actually like under the weather right now. So 
I don't know what's going on, but hey, we thank God for the energy to do this video for my loving audience. So give me a thumbs up because I'm not feeling well and I'm still doing this video for y'all. Now the extra light, I included it because my mom also used to use it from time to time. That one should be a better formulation for people who don't like the heavy grease feel, but ugh, do grow with life, fam. Um. Now be wary because it does have protein in it. And when I did use it on my ends, recently it was a little iffy so it's one of those greases i don't use as often as i did when i had relaxed hair when i have relaxed hair it just made my hair super soft and of course it did because protein is going to fortify hair that's already had the hydrogen bonds compromised so for my styling products i don't really use many because i don't like styling my hair i really can't come and kill myself it's either a fro or some buns or some cornrows or some like travis scott hair let's say some asap rocky hair because he's like <laughs> about as cute as i am actually no i'm cuter whatever anyway so my stylers kinky curly styling gel which i absolutely love it's expensive but it works very well for actually defining my hair when i want to wear a wash and go i also love the love naturals gel i love all the products from their line like y'all don't understand i didn't list every single product in this video but all the products from their line are a flipping one so there's that as well it's really phenomenal not drying ph balance obviously um and it just smells really sweet now the gorilla snot gel i'm going to show you all the three that i use i use them all for different reasons so the red which is the rocker I use that for like my buns, but I don't use it on top. I use it to slick down everything underneath. And um, if I don't really want to hold, but I want my waves to be popping, then I'm going to use that gel. The other one I use is a sport, and that's like a strong hold, a very strong hold, but it still like lets my hair feel nice and soft. So I don't have to use much of it, and I usually use that for the top of these kinds of styles. Now the final one I use is the Punk, and I use that one to slay my edges occasionally. Actually, I use it to slay my edges most times. And then I put my other styler, which is the Got To Be Glued Spray, and I use that over top. So I typically only use the Punk for my edges. Maybe I'll use it for right here, just to make sure that everything's nice and flat. But of course, I still pop a scarf on there, so everything slayed regardless. But Gorilla Snot is by far one of my favorite gels, and they don't have protein, which is super important for me. Now, the primary reason why I can't use the Eco Styler Gel is because all of them, as far as I know, pretty much all of them have protein. I can't think of one that doesn't. If there is one that doesn't, let me know down below. I mean, I'm still not trying to use their gel. It makes my hair really dry, brittle, crusty, and it breaks my hair. So I'm not about that life. Not trying to use their products whatsoever, but Gorilla Snot does not do that, and it defines my curls and coils. Well, coils, kinky coils, whatever. So I used the punk on this piece after I put my leave-in in, and I guess my hair is kind of gunky and has buildup on it, so it's kind of like crazy looking. Now, if I had used the sport one, I guarantee I wouldn't have had any buildup, but the curl definition, it would have still been really popping. So I really could just use the sport one. I know I was thinking, whatever. <laughs> I just used the punk one because I felt like it. But yeah, that one does cause buildup. The sport one never causes buildup for me personally, and I can layer it as much as I want without any issues. Next is the Obia Naturals Twist Whip Butter. Now, personally, as much as I love this product, I feel like it's just like a heavier leave-in, so I use it as my cream step typically in my LCO method. Um, it kind of just makes my leave-in work a little bit better. I feel like it doesn't really lend too much to actually styling my hair, in my personal opinion. There's not a lot of hold. And even though it's really fantastic, yeah, I, I get what they mean, twist whip butter. I think it's more for like twisting your hair, not twisting out or braiding out. It's really rich and I love the way it makes my hair feel. Um, yeah, and it's one of my favorite stylers. <laughs> Now for my Holy Grail products, which you actually can't get in the store. I make them myself, my Shea Butter Mix, which I touched on briefly. I love it so much. It's a rich blend of different butters, oils, and essential oils. And I did meticulous research about a decade ago to find out what exactly would work really well for my hair and in what concentration. So it's really potent and really phenomenal for growth. I love using it on my scalp. And again, it nourishes my very dry scalp. Now my other Holy Grail products, my medicated growth oil, 
for dry slash sensitive scalp. Now, I don't have any information on that out there, and it's something I started incorporating more recently. Now, they got rid of one of my favorite oils, they reformulated it, the Wild Growth Hair Oil. So when that happened, I pretty much decided to make my own oil with a different formula and with ingredients that I love and that nourish my hair, and this has been a lifesaver. For me, it's completely replaced my Wild Growth Hair Oil, and it's actually been making my hair growing really strong and really healthy. Now, I like to use this in conjunction with my Sulfur 8 because those are the only two things I use on my scalp and both of those products have proven to be really, really beneficial for my hair health and my hair growth. Now my miscellaneous product is the Love Naturals Acidifier. So this is a great product to use if you need to seal your cuticle. So if I use a leave-in that's not pH balanced or if I just want my cuticle to close up, then I use my acidifier and it's really, really great it made a huge difference in my hair regimen during the winter when i struggled in new york city y'all don't even know i like new york was a time and a half but yeah the acidifier is one of my favorite products of all time a great product to have in any hair regimen something that basically acidifies whatever you're putting on your hair and closes the cuticle bringing your hair back to um, an appropriate ph so essentially um it's a ph balancer now y'all, that's the entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd actually like to share my hair tools for you all, but I'll do that in a different video because I didn't want this to get too long-winded and hair tools is a whole separate topic. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you made it this far, you know, put the blue emoji down in the comment section below. I'd love it if you shared with me your favorite products and why you use them. And please recommend some better leave-ins for me. I'm really interested in trying main choice. I need leave-ins that are more deeply moisturizing, especially since Shea Moisture is playing with you girls. So let me know what's up. So guys, my camera, like, well, it died earlier, but didn't die right now. I just ran out of space on my memory card, so I'm just gonna close this off with some, with a clip from my iPhone. Anywho, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. And um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, of course. Give this video a big thumbs up so YouTube knows you enjoy this type of content. And of course, I love all of you so much. I love you especially so much. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.